that if you're not the most comp competent or no, confident person in the world, why do you get up on the stage in front of 2,000 people? I often ask myself that. And the answer is? Well, it's, it's an interesting answer. I guess there's, there's a part that's, a, that's a, a compulsion. It's not a, I, I don't have a love for the theater. I don't. I know, I talked to, talk to, talk to you about that earlier. And it's something I don't tell a lot of people. There are moments in the theater that I wouldn't trade. This is just myself, mm -hmm. not, not anybody else. I mean, I, I enjoy watching many, many actors. And I go, wow, I admire that. I admire, I admire the talent, the grace, the ability, the awareness, the, you know, the, the intelligence especially, but um, the emotional intelligence. And I, I don't like exposing myself like that on stage. So when you say you don't love theater, you don't uh, love the conditions of what it is, or you don't like the form? I don't like the form because it's all centered on us. I would rather, oh. I don't want to be focused on, and I, what an odd business to be in, if that's what you feel. Uh, I guess I don't want to portray emotions. I want to be emotions. I don't want to act it. I'd rather just be, and I don't want to do it in front of people. I was, like a lot of actors, and I'm finding out more and more, we were intensely shy people. Intense, I'm, I'm to the point where it's, when I was growing up, I would rather go sit in the shadow than to step in the light. And I don't know what drew me into it. Even to this day, I would rather be a painter because then it, you, you put it on a wall, that's your art. You know, you can step back or go in another room and some people come in and criticize it if they want to or like it if they want to. But when we're out there, you know, it's just, it's just us. We are the canvas. But I don't, there is a contradiction here, Rick McMillan, that you are an stunning performer and a <laughs> really wonderful actor. You have performing reflexes that I don't. I see you do things as a performer. There's an actor, Rick, there's performer, Rick, and there's that intricate balance in there. But I go, I wish I had some of those reflexes. How do you do that? And you're but telling that's me what I say about you, you don't <laughs> want to do it. <laughs> I just said about you. I don't. I don't. I mean, why don't you become a banker? Well, I, I, there has to be something still in art. Uh, I mean, that's, I, we're predisposed to that. You know, I, I think that, and I don't know why I'm saying this because I, I feel bad saying this out loud because it's going on camera, but it's important to say this though, because yeah. there's so many uh, different facets to, because most people, well, you're an actor, you must be an ex extrovert, it's, you must yeah. love being in front of people, you must want the attention. Yeah, look at the assumptions people make, you know? Yeah. It's, it's not true at all. It's yeah. not true. I mean, it's a very precious thing to be in front of an audience. You don't want to waste their time. You want them to have a, a meaningful experience that night in the theater. And if you can be part of that, that's the most incredible feeling in the world. But I would say 80% to 90% of the time we act, that's not the case. It's the 10%. It's sometimes the 5%. It's the, the five fingers on a hand, the number of performances that you will cherish in your life as an actor. That you felt moved people or you connected to people or you felt like you were breathing as one on stage with. Those, that's what I kind of work for. You know? But I have to point out you are setting the bar incredibly high, and rightfully so, though, by saying uh, all the incredible work I've seen you do, to say, you know, five, maybe. You, you've set a bar that's so high, but I, and I utterly mean rightfully so, too, to push the art up and up and up, that your demands of the profession are incredibly, and incredible good and right, and I totally agree with them. Um, it's often, like, you know, I, sometimes I do a show and I come off and I'm like, well, that was a crock. And people come back and say, that yes. was fantastic. Thank you for <laughs> doing that. And I go, well, inside, it was a crock for me. And then I, then I start distrusting that voice inside me, which criticizes what I did and yeah. go, is this a voice from crazy land? Or should I be listening to a voice <laughs> like that? Or just, I say to the, then when I'm on stage, when I find that happening, I have another little voice that says, Robert, shut up. Maybe it's working for them, keep going. Don't give in to your own, perhaps self-indulgent criticism at the moment of performance. So yeah. that's a bit off on a tangent, but it's not. It's it's that's. I think you've expressed what the truth is. So when yeah. you say you want people to come in in the theater and have a meaningful experience, in what way? Uh, I think I think in terms of connection and emotion. 
I don't see theater as an intellectual medium. I mean, there's an as that's an aspect, that's a side effect of it, but it's an emotional connection, it's an emotional journey. That's what I've always feel. If you can connect to a person's heart, and they can connect to yours. Um, and that's why I have problems with British directors, because it's the ones that I admit is highly intellectual, it's how do you achieve an effect as opposed to how do you achieve the truth of emotion. And it may not be the way that they want it, but it's the way that you want to do it, they won't allow you to do it because it's not in their welcome, in their understanding. But it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's the toughest business in the world you can choose, I think.